create with Fran Sydney. Hello everyone, welcome to the show. Today we're going to have episode number 80. It's a beautiful number and just for this special episode we're going to have another guest. We've been talking about self-reliance, resilience, mindset and today we want to discover what happens when you realize that uh, you might die any minute because you have a really important heart condition that will require life or problems and surgeries. And we're going to talk to Justin and he will tell us all about his new perspective since he was diagnosed with um, heart failure, since he was very, very tiny. So first of all, we want to welcome you to the show. So hello, Justin. Hello, Franz. Thank you for having me today. Yes, it's great. And I heard your story already, but I'm just so keen to have you tell people really what happens when you realize that you might die and you are given months to live. What happens to your hope for, for everything? You know, people are, well, I want you to do things. So what happened to you? Tell me about, just from the beginning, what happened? And then I will maybe ask you just a question or two, but just tell the, the audience what happens to you. Where, where are you anyway? Are you in the States, right? Yes, ma'am. I live in Arkansas and I just built an off-grid cabin uh, that wasn't quite uh, warm or cool enough. And so working to make uh, my off-grid lifestyle a little more comfortable, but uh, just enjoy sharing my story more than anything. Yeah, I think that's what really people enjoy listening to. It's a story and it attracts them because it's real. It's not made up for, you know, a show, just a real thing. And normal, ordinary people can show so much resilience. It can be inspirational for all of us. I had a lot of heart problems in my family from my mom and my grandmother and I saw them having lots of problems and I know what it's like. I, I actually witnessed a heart attack of my grandmother. She was taken away by the ambulances. I was 10. So it's a lot of memories there, right? And it's tough. And, and what happens when the heart that is not going well is your own heart? You know, so tell us. And I'm just here sitting and I hope you as our audience will enjoy listening to Justin. Off you go, it's all yours. So a little background to my heart condition. I'm one in about 100,000 kids a year born with this particular congenital heart defect. And it was really a series of defects, but the, the overall problem is that I don't get oxygenated blood. The two pumps aren't going right. So there's a pump that goes to the body the one that goes to the lungs, well, mine are transposed, so it's just a circular loop. So from birth, my first day, I took an ambulance ride and then a helicopter ride and ended up in incubation and you know spent the first year almost in a hospital. And so I've had this wisdom of mortality since a very young age. And people talk about live like you're dying. And that is great advice except that it it forces you to then go out and do something or completely give up, right? It either forces this resilience. So in me, I had good parents that didn't believe in telling me I had limits and they would not let me do anything. My dad's favorite thing to say was can't, didn't do shit. So if I said, I can't do that, that, that was not allowed. So I, have, I had to at least try and then I could decide if I could really do it or not on my own for the most part. So that helped build that ability to be resilient because my heart every day from about fifth grade forward, I felt like I was having a heart attack. It would stabbing pain, my arm would go numb, we could just be sitting here talking and there would be just massive pain. And that went on until I decided to have surgery in my mid twenties to try to fix a leak in the valve that was causing that pain. And I felt great for a year and I rode motorcycles and life was great. And uh, <clears throat> then I went for a checkup and they said, you're about to die. Your heart's four times its normal size. Uh, and we need to go in and replace your valve with a mechanical valve. And that was not what I was expecting. I just was getting a checkup uh, because I had moved for a new job. And so for the second time in two years, I had to go through open heart surgery. So the motorcycle club was like, hey, this life isn't for you. So I got thrown out of that. And then 
I worked really well. I went back to work uh, despite surgeries and getting a pacemaker. They offered me a promotion and I said, I can't do this because I, I just couldn't stop thinking about my heart and what was wrong with it. And I just felt it all the time. It was just always an issue, it felt like, and a lot of other health concerns. So I ended up on no job, but no club, no life. I had a woman I was dating and we were engaged to be married. Uh, I'd actually gotten married and then a couple of months later, here I am with no job and I'm sitting on a couch and I'm watching daytime TV. And I don't know if you have this show over there, but there's a show called Maury Povich and it's like a daytime talk show. It's just a scandal show all about women trying to figure out who their baby's daddy is. And they do like these lie detector tests and paternity tests on the show. And I'm watching this. Yeah, it's just retarded. And I'm, they go to commercial break and I'm just mad, you know, like, I want to know who the dad is. And I go in the bathroom and I look at myself in the mirror and I realize this is not who I want to be if I'm going to live 20 years. Because in the midst of all this, I'm thinking I'm going to die. My health feels awful. I can't do anything anymore. I'm just tired all the time. They're like, you're in good shape now. You should live 20 years now that you have that mechanical valve and the pacemaker. I'd never been told I had 20 years to live before. They were always like, well, we hope to see you next year. <clears throat> so anytime I talked to the doctors, it's like, well, we hope you come back next year or in six months. And it was, uh, so that was my mindset. I always just had to hurry up with things. So I got my uh, degree in two years instead of four. It traditionally takes four years. So I did it in two here while working full time because I had to get things done because I was dying. Well, then they told me I had 20 years to live. So for the first time I had this mindset shift of I have time to really plan out some things and think longer term about what I do today and how it can impact who I'm going to be in 15, 20 years. And so sitting on the couch watching Maury Povich wasn't what I wanted to do for 20 years. And I decided to start focusing on what my dad said and what I can do. And I can read. So that's one thing I enjoyed doing. So I started just reading good books and not just good in the sense of like classic books, good in the sense of they were good for me. They educated me on things I was interested in. And one of them was, uh, I don't remember the title or even the author, but the, the concept was if you're fat, broke, an alcoholic, you know, something wrong with you, then you've got a golden ticket for your million dollar industry. And of course, this is before the internet, but it was, you know, just fixing it because everything works and nothing doesn't. And if you fix your problem and then sell that information to other people, then you can speak and coach and do all these other things. And I'm like, well, hey, that sounds like something I could do. And so I just started focusing on, I can be something better than what I've ever thought I could be before. And so part of that was I was becoming a dad. So I needed to be physically fit enough to, to work with him. I wanted to, so I created just some really big, hairy, audacious goals. My big, hairy dream, if I'm living 60 years, I want to ramp off the International Space Station on a space chopper and go the distance and see about long distance space. Because I knew that we would get to where rich people would go to space. And I wanted to solve the education crisis in the world by creating a college that was based on how do you fix your messed up story because everybody in the world has been raised under traumatic circumstances that give us all issues that we need to fix. <clears throat> that if we decide that, you know, that who we want to be in 60 years, right? Or the day before you die, who do you want to be? Who do you want to be remembered as? Do you want to be the nice guy? Do you want to be a grandparent? Do you want to have friends around you? And what things do you want to have accomplished? So I, I got lucky and I, I did careers in like three to five year sprints because I always thought I was dying. So I'm going to try this for a while. This works out. I like doing this. Now I want to do this. And so I did it intentionally. Like if I spend, you know, five years in different things, then how many different things can I accomplish in my at least 20 years? And so now I'm 15 years into those 20 years. I've done almost all of the things that I set on my big, hairy, audacious goals list. 
except for the I haven't changed the world with education yet. And I haven't ramped off the International Space Station yet. But personally, you know, my health is better. My I built a cabin in the woods with my bare hands with, without ever taking a class on building, without really absorbing anything other than that the dream was possible. And so finally found a piece of land. It was a good deal. The finances were right, made it work and uh, built this little off-grid cabin and learned a lot in the process and then got divorced and was supposed to be getting a new pacemaker. My pacemaker's running out. And because of the heart failure, my assumption and what the doctors had kind of been leading me to believe was that this heart failure was, was tragic and that I was going to need a transplant. And I have no desire to get a transplant. I, I'm, I'm kind of tired of playing God and making decisions to just continue the inevitable thing of delaying death because it happens to all of us. The number one first rule of survival is everything lives and everything dies. And to make life easier, you kind of have to accept that and know that you're comfortable with the other side of that. Uh, so, <clears throat> you know, for me, it, it wasn't an issue. So I did all the exploration stuff just to make sure because I'm like, well, let, let's see how bad I really am because I want to make sure that if I don't get the pacemaker, I'm just going to die. I'm not going to suffer. Well, they're like, you'll probably live another 20 years. You're in great shape but for, you know, somebody with your condition. Like we have, I don't have any patients that are near as good a shape as you. So here I am. I just got to where I'd accomplished everything. I was so happy to die. It, it was I was okay with not ramping off the space station or changing the world, right? I'd fixed my life. I improved my health. I'd been a man that my son could be proud of. <clears throat> you know, he could look me in the eye and know that I'd done the best that I could, given the circumstances that I had. So this comfort and joy and a whole nother change of perspective that I'm going through now, of, well, now I have, you know, just a regular outlook on life like everybody else. So. You know, now what do I want to do with that? <laughs> and so again, shifting mindsets once again. But if it wasn't for just accepting that I was in control of what I put into my brain, my education, and that's what the, my revolution for education was based on, is that you get to control. And now, especially, it's, it's all free it's, or cheap. Like you can learn anything. Like right now I'm improving my database skills and trying to learn code for database analyst because I like data and I like analyzing stuff and so I want to use that part of my brain I've not done that yet mm -hmm. so you know and it, it's all just out there so there, there is so much stuff I mean guys have you picked up a few things from here you know I'm just talking to the people listening to us hello I'm still here I was just smiling you can't see that and I was like hmm granting like, it is a great story and instead of just sitting there say well I'm gonna die, I might as well just get drunk, destroy my life, you know, drugs, or whatever, be a victim, you know, go to the hospital, die in front of a TV. Then Justin said, well, I'm just gonna make a difference in the world. I think he also wrote a book and things like that. So you, you, I think you realize it's your mindset. It's not what happens to you, but what you do about it that makes the huge difference. And maybe we've been put on earth to make the difference, whether we live one day over 100 years, we all have this potential to touch the lives of other people. And your way is to show that things can be done even if you have a really serious heart problem. And I remember you told me the other day when we were doing the pre-podcast chat that you're actually fitter now than you were before because you're like an athlete, you, you train yourself. How, how does that help you to, to face the future? Uh, so it gives me a lot more optimism that, you know, I, I can just be a normal person, right? There is dignity in going to work. It was difficult to identify who I was without a career. And so now I'm a massage therapist, which is considered, you know, athletic performance. I work for 60 to 90 minutes at a time doing physical movements and labor with my entire body, which when you're laying on a couch, does not seem like something you're going to do. <laughs> you know, like when you can barely walk to the mailbox without getting winded, it does not seem like something you can do. When your joints hurt all the time, it doesn't feel like that. So 
it uh, it feels great to just be I got a I got a job and I get to go to work like a normal human being. Mm-hmm. That's pretty cool. So do you have a formula or some tips that you want to share with people listening to us who might be coping with chronic disease or stress or something very sad and tragic that happened to them and also connected to the fact you said very wisely that really all of us are born in circumstances that are not ideal meaning whether you're rich or poor you might have trauma you might have parents that didn't like you or you didn't like them you might not like your family your country maybe there were poverty or war maybe You are a trophy child. You're very rich and you have a trophy child. You have to excel in everything. And a lot of people think, oh my gosh, now that I know the power of the words, I know I'm destroying my children. We're all going to be traumatized. And I just, the more I do therapy, the more I realize that maybe we're all traumatizing our children (laughs) with whatever we say, (laughs) whatever we do. And so instead of living like victim and say, Oh, it's the fault of my mom and my dad and my grandparents. I cannot do this, I cannot do that. And instead, we we'll want to look at the future and say, well, they've done what they knew that was going to be okay. But now I'm going to take this direction and I'm going to mold my life because I am me, I'm good enough and I'm worthy and I can do so much more than just sit as a victim. So based on this, what is your advice to other people who, as I said, my being a condition that makes me feel like oh, I'm depressed, I can never solve this problem. What would you say to them? Uh, so I did probably a few very specific things. Actually, when I was coaching, I put together like 13 particular things, but meditation is very powerful and just simple body movements of, of small things. Like if you're wheelchair bound, but you can move your head up and down, there's a Chinese proverb about the turtle that lived for a thousand years and all he did was lift his head back and forth because small movements actually build the energy in your body. So if you're meditating and doing these small, just tensing your muscles and relaxing them. And then with, you know, for me, it came from faith. Uh, I'm a Christian, so belief that my God was going to take care of me, that he was not going to have me live for no reason. But the science behind the belief is such that even without the religious aspect, your mindset affects your actual cellular level. Uh, So there's a gentleman by the name of Dr. Bruce Lipton that talks about that. Um, So intentional meditation, journaling with intention. So you mentioned I wrote a book and the book was really just, I'm going to do this action today. And that's going to lead to these consequences of positivity tomorrow and that's going to change the future in this grand wonderful way and every day I tried to do at least one intentional thing and move the ball forward just one degree one percent every day was all I focused on to where that they snowballed to where now I have the ideal life and that was one of the other things I did in that writing and journaling was what would my ideal life look like What would I be able to do? What would I be able to live like? What would my house look like? What would I eat? What would I drink? What did love feel like? What would peace be like? Um, You know, and if the world had peace in it, what would I do every day? You know, because we live in a time and an age where the majority of us do not have to worry about our daily bread. It's in the refrigerator. We have food. We know we can go to the store. You know, life is fairly convenient, even in our economic times and upheaval of COVID and things we've been through. The majority of us deal with a pretty good life. And I, I feel like that's why we're all in trauma, because we have the time to be. <laughs> you know, we, we don't have the time to just worry about getting food in our belly and not dying from some sort of tragedy or work that we have to do in order to survive. So, I don't know, yeah, really just the, the meditation, the journaling with intention, and just believing that you can be different than what you want and are right now, and that it, you have time. You don't have to do it today. You're not going to necessarily see a change overnight, but it's that long-term thinking that helps. helps. Mm-hmm. I, I do like that you quote Bruce Lipton. For, for, for those of you guys who are listening and they're wondering who on earth is Bruce Lipton, he has a PhD, he's a stem cell biologist, and he wrote a very famous book called The Biology of Belief. And he got the um, one of the peace awards. He's very internationally recognized for all his work. 
and he explains that we do not have just genes or blood and circulation. We have to have an environment for that. And the genes, the epigenetics, he's the father of epigenetics, the modern ones. He explains that we can affect with our thoughts and with our actions all about our genes. And um, if you remember, there was experiment. He did some experiment where he put things in vitro, the same stem cells in two little, two different containers. I don't know all the lab names, but one was in a certain environment, and one was a different pH, a different environment, and the stem cell developed differently. And he was saying, when you change the environment, you change everything. And uh, we have an ecology in our minds, don't we? And so. When you tell to a person you're gonna die, all his cells are gonna prepare to die. They're gonna shrink and die, because that's what he believes. But when you tell a person, oh, of course you're gonna get better, there is so much more positive energy going towards healing. And it might work, it might not, but it's just the opening of his acceptance that the person can survive. And I love that you um, educated yourself and learned and opened up instead of just relying to one particular side of science or one particular doctor you actually read a bit of everything so i thought i would add this to make sure that people remember that education is power isn't yeah. it and when we have that education we realize just how how ignorant we were before and how much we still need to learn and so it's a joyous discovery and as you said your christian faith also help you to know that you got a purpose and all of us have a purpose, whether we have a missing leg or our health is not very good, maybe we're not very good looking, maybe we're not the smartest person, but guess what? We all have a purpose. Yeah. We're all and, here for, yeah. you know, for the good reason. The one that I found was encourage others. So the Bible says that if you don't have any of the other gifts of the spirit, then you can encourage other people. And so that was kind of the, because I don't, I didn't, I didn't have anything. I was, I was not a nice person. I didn't have a lot of skills because I was always dying and I didn't worry about developing all of that stuff. Uh, you know, I just did what I had to do. I did the, you know, college thing, got a job out of college. They trained me how to do it. And I did that for a while until I got something else, you know, parlay those things. And But I never really learned a skill. I just learned how to push buttons that they told me to push at the right times and talk to the right people at the right, you know, time to, to make the transaction happen or whatever. So, um, you know, there's a lot of people with a lot more talent than me that can do a lot more than I've been able to do uh, because they don't have the excuses. I mean, I had, not only did I have the heart problem, but I, somewhere along the line, I broke my back, which I didn't realize until this past August after I built the house and was lugging rocks and all that. Then I went to the doctor and had a coupon for a chiropractor. And he's like, um, did you know you broke your back? <laughs> no. Oh, yeah. So uh, apparently I've been dealing with that. And, and, you know, when they cut you open for surgery, I had a lot of other back problems that I've gotten dealt with years ago where I was 75% subluxed and I had a hip out of socket. And so I had a dislocated leg that I walked, I mean, just hundreds of miles on because walking was one of the other rehabilitative things I did. I, I had dogs and so I'd go to the woods and walk because there was public land that you could just go let your dogs run around and walk and so I would do that and uh, all on a dislocated leg and a broken back and just you know suck it up and keep going because that's what you do in life but uh, I don't recommend that <laughs> go get, if you're in pain go get it looked at but, uh, but it's frustrating yeah but then tell me Justin because you don't so much stuff but if people want to talk to you about your story hear more about how you're maybe they have a heart problem or maybe they want to be helped to apply your formula is there a way they can find you is there an email address or a website uh the best way is just um, any social media that they use justin c kurtz i use my name i don't hide who i am um i i was trying to do the website and trying to find people that i can pay and trust and do a good job has been challenging so uh facebook and TikTok is my I like TikTok now because I can share a lot of what I'm doing with the cabin. And, uh, if you want to support me, I'm on buymeacoffee.com, Justin C. Kurtz there. Uh, and you can actually make donations or purchase coaching through that website as well. Brilliant. 
Well, thank you so much, Justin. It was a really vibrant and a very, very good conversation. And I think I learned more, although I think I know all about mindset, don't I? But it's so good to have this, this refreshing point of view that despite having such a big problem, you know, that can lead you to death. You're there and you're going. You know, we might see you in 50 years, you're still going. In another 20 years, you're still going. And, um, and that really drives all this show, Create with Francis, to create the life you want. And create it with your thoughts first, with your mind, with intention, with visualizing what you want. Instead of thinking of what you don't want, think about what you want and you will get there. So thank you for being with us. Thank you so much. And um, I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. And uh, if you found it interesting and enlightening, maybe you want to share, click share and write a nice review and send it to somebody who maybe feels that his life is in the end because it might help him to maybe acquire a little bit of a different perspective. So thank you everyone for being with me and take care. Bye bye. You've listened to Create with Franz Sidney.